Hi there, my name is David A. Robertson, and I am the author of When We Were Alone, which is a picture book that addresses residential school history. I wrote this book because of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in the end. Their calls to action asked teachers to do something really difficult, and that was to teach residential school history, along with Indigenous history, to kids all the way from kindergarten into grade 12. And when I saw that request, and I, I know how important resources are to teachers because they have such a difficult job to do, I wanted to create a resource for teachers to use to help that very difficult task that we had given them. And there just wasn't something out there at the time for kids as young as kindergarten, um, grade one. So I sat down to write when we were alone. One of the things that I wanted to do with when we were alone was to, first of all, write an age appropriate story. So a story that wouldn't traumatize children about this history. The other things that I wanted to do with it were to address the fundamental principles of the residential school system. So what was the system trying to accomplish? And in the end, in a way that kids could really understand, it was trying to change who kids were, trying to change who Indigenous children were. Uh, and so we, in the book, it addresses getting their hair cut, not being able to wear the clothes that they like to wear, not being able to speak their language, and this um, disconnect from family, so keeping kids away from family. So that was, that was something that was really important to me. The one thing I didn't address was um, the ways in which children often had their names changed, and that was something that I talked to kids about face-to-face -face when I present to them. Um, but the other thing that this book uh, does is it talks about intergenerational trauma, so how these experiences that were, uh, that Indigenous children went through in residential schools, so survivors and kids who did not survive, how those experiences were passed down from one generation to the next, and also how healing works, so how sharing stories helps us to heal. And I think that is also reflected within the pages of when we were alone. And finally, with this book, and, and all of this I think is important, especially on a day like today, uh, of the reconciliation, Day for Truth and Reconciliation, Orange Shirt Day, um, or really any day, is you know, to learn the history um, as well as you can so that you can share that history and, and share what you know to educate others. Um, and, and to give uh, survivors a, a safe space to share their stories. Um, and I think also it's a day to, to honor survivors and to honor um, those children who did not survive. And that's what I ultimately, in the end, wanted to do with this book. Um, my grandmother was a residential school survivor. She attended Norrie House Indian Residential School in the early 20th century, from early 1920s into the early 1930s, and uh, she was never able to tell her story. Uh, she died never having shared what she went through, and that's something that we have had to come to terms with. And even though I've done a lot of research about Norrie House Indian Residential School, I'll still never know her story. And so... I wanted this book also to enable and empower survivors to tell their stories, but also to honor those that were not able to uh, and are not able to because um, they did not survive their experience or uh, they grew up in a time where they did not have the platform and the opportunity and the empowerment um, to tell their stories in order to go through and start that healing journey. And that's, in the end, that's the biggest point of this book, I think, is to honor survivors, honor those kids who did not survive, and make sure their stories are told so that we never forget them, and that we are able to share their experiences and teach others what we have learned. And books are a very powerful tool to do that. So um, thank you very much. 
Hi, I'm Melanie Florence. I'm a children's author. Um, but I'm actually not going to talk about my own books today because I find it a lot more exciting to talk about books that I love as a reader instead of my own books as a writer. And since I only get five minutes to do this, I'm going to kind of zoom through my choices of my absolute favorite books by Indigenous authors and illustrators. Um, there are so many. I grabbed a giant armful of books and I'm going to kind of go through these really quick because I don't have a whole lot of time and I want to share as many of my favorites as I can. So I'm going to start with picture books. and. When I talk about uh, picture books by Indigenous authors and illustrators, the first name that always pops into my head when I'm recommending books to others is David Robertson. Um, and this one, When We Were Alone, and I've also got the Cree version, which is wonderful, is by David Robertson and Julie Flett, who is the illustrator. And it's probably my favorite picture book. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. It's an amazing way to very delicately, I think, introduce um, residential schools to children. And it's just absolutely beautifully done. Uh, highly recommend. Always my first choice when I'm recommending a book is David Robertson. He's actually got a new one called On the Trap Line, which I have yet to pick up, but it's on my list. I'm definitely going to add that one to my bookshelf. Next, I'm going to share these books, which are actually by Robert Munch, but they're illustrated by the amazing, amazing Jay Ojek. And um, he actually is also one of my favorite comic book creators because I love comic books. Um, Kagaji the Raven is actually his uh, comic book creation and actually became a TV show as well. So highly recommend these books, um, Bear for Breakfast and Black Flies. And please check out Kagaji the Raven as well. The Water Walker by Joanne Robertson, who actually wrote and illustrated this book. Um, man, I'm running through my time so quickly here. Highly recommend. And if I was going to talk about Julie Flett as an illustrator, I actually really wanted to include a book by Julie Flett that is her creation alone. So as author illustrator, Wild Berries by Julie Flett is absolutely beautiful, stunning. Um, there's really nothing more to say. Incredibly talented. Wild Berries, I highly recommend. And two of my favorites. Again, I always say they're my favorites, but um, You Hold Me Up by Monique Grace Smith and Danielle Daniel. And this one by Monique and illustrated by Julie Flett, My Heart Fills with Happiness. So I always love to recommend Monique's work, um, Danielle's work, and Julie's work because they're just absolutely gorgeous. But these are two that I absolutely love. I keep saying that, but I do love them all. Um, and I wanted to talk about comic books a little bit because, like I said, I'm a big comic book fan. So um, David Robertson, again, his name will always pop up in any list of books that I recommend. Sugar Falls, Seven Generations, both by uh, David. And, oh my gosh, I've read a whole bunch of his, but Sugar Falls is probably my absolute favorite. And this one's a re-release. Um, it's a comic book, a graphic novel, really, about residential schools and absolutely recommend this one uh, probably my favorite graphic novel but this one actually came out called this place 150 years retold and it's by a ton of different amazing amazing creators and it's just honestly again i'm going to use this word it's unequaled as far as graphic novels go and it tells so many different stories like i said it spans 150 years so again this place 150 years retold uh, it's definitely one if you like graphic novels you have to pick that one up oh, okay so i'm gonna do two really fast here for like young adults and for some reason i don't know where my other two are but this is a trilogy again david robertson because if there's a genre that can be written, I think David could write it, quite frankly. But this one's called Monsters. It's part of a trilogy, and it's a lot of fun. It's an adventure. It really keeps you wanting to read and um, kind of on the edge of your seat. And it, it deals with mental health, too, which I think is really, really important. So that trilogy and... Aviak Johnston wrote Those Who Run in the Sky, which is a really cool fantasy um, that I really, really, really enjoyed. So moving on, because I'm running out of time very quickly here. If we talk about adult novels, um, Richard Wagamese, I would not 
be able to recommend books without adding some of his Indian Horse, Embers, Medicine Walk, and this one called Starlight, which is just wonderful. Um, highly recommend, as always, these are all things I highly recommend. Richard Van Camp. This one is called Moccasin Square Gardens, but The Lesser Blessed is one of my all-time favorite books. Um, and Richard also does picture books. We sang you home and little use. So um, another author that really can do multiple genres. Um, Eden Robinson, Son of a Trickster, again, part of a series. And um, just Eden Robinson is a wonderful, wonderful writer. I'm always going to say highly recommend because I love all of these books. Um, this is probably one of the best novels that I have read in a long, long, long time. I read it during a snowstorm, which was kind of scary, but at the same time, absolutely loved it. It's kind of an apocalyptic uh, novel, and it's just absolutely wonderful um, by Wab Gishig Rice, and it's Moon of the Crusted Snow. Like I said, probably the best novel that um, I've read in a very long time. And two, sorry, I leaned on a frame there, two nonfiction books that I want to share. Um, this one called Seven Fallen Feathers by Tanya Talega is uh, racism, death, and hard truths in a northern city. And that basically is what it's about. Um, she's a journalist, um, an investigative reporter. And so this is written with so much information, but at the same time, it, it's one of those books that you really can't Put down about um, seven Indigenous kids that died in Thunder Bay over a short period of years and um, it's really I, it's heartbreaking it's brilliantly written um, and I, I, I cannot recommend this book enough and if you want to read about the History of Residential Schools. This is an amazing resource uh, by Larry Lai and who is actually a residential school survivor. And this calls upon the stories of other survivors as well. It's, it's heavy with photos, a lot of information, but because it's recollections of people that actually experienced it, I think it's um, there really isn't another book about residential schools that I think is going to give you as much information firsthand as uh, this one has done. So I highly recommend this one as well. So I went way over my time, so I hope uh, that's okay. But those are some of my favorite books. And I, I'm thinking of a whole bunch more books that I didn't grab off my shelf. Uh, Cherie Dimaline, uh, Joshua Whitehead, Tracy Lindbergh, Lee Maracle, all these amazing Indigenous authors. Um, I can't, like I said, these are all just wonderful books. There is a wealth of amazing Indigenous books out there, and uh, I strongly, strongly urge you to read as many as you can, to recommend as many as you can, and um, that's it. Thanks so much. Quay, Jay Odrick and Indigenicas. Hello, my name is Jay Odrick. I'm an Algonquin artist, writer, television producer, jack of all trades, and master of absolutely none. <laughs> from the Kirigan Zivia Anishinaabe community in Quebec. It's about, for those of you unfamiliar, about an hour and a half outside of Ottawa. So uh, I'd like to say thanks to the Pickering Public Library for having me here today. I'm, I'm honored and thrilled to join you for Truth and Reconciliation Day. I think today is an important day and uh, we'll get into why that is. Um, but I'd also like to say thank you for hanging out with me here today. It's, it's a real thrill for me to, uh, to be able to join you, even if only virtually. So uh, I guess before I really get started, I should probably introduce myself and talk about myself a little bit, even though uh, clearly you can see I'm so shy and such a wallflower. Um, yeah, so I'm, I would say I'm most known for my collaborations with who I would consider to be Canada's greatest children's book writer, the renowned Robert Munch. I was fortunate enough in my career to have collaborated with Robert twice on two books. The first one being uh, Black Flies, the second one being Bear for Breakfast. And those are both important books because uh, they feature uh, indigenous casts of characters and are set in First Nations communities. And we'll talk a little bit more about why I feel that's important after. Uh, I would suggest I'm also known for my own graphic novel that I wrote and drew Kagagi the Raven, which was later adapted into a television series, an animated series. And it was the first ever indigenous superhero television show. It aired internationally in Canada, the United States, and Australia. So I've been very blessed in my career. I've been very fortunate. And uh, Kagagi was important, as, as was Black Flies and Bear. And what really inspired me to make those, to, to work on those projects, 
was that as a First Nations kid, as an Algonquin kid growing up on a reserve in, in Canada, I never saw myself in the entertainment that I consumed. I never saw myself in, whether that was in television, film, or in books, really. And I think it's important that we do see diversity and we are all feel included and seen uh, in, the, in our media and the stuff that we enjoy. Um, and really, I think we all benefit from learning about each other more than anything, which brings us to, you know, the idea of truth and reconciliation. For me, I'm not sure what reconciliation means to everyone, but for me, it's never been about government. It doesn't mean government. It doesn't mean legislation. It doesn't mean programs. To me, it's always been about people connecting and people coming together. And it's been a particularly trying year um, between the pandemic, lockdown, all of those things. And in more recent days and months, of course, the recent discoveries on former residential school properties of uh, the bodies of, of First Nations children who were there. And I don't want to get too into that, but, but it's something that if you're not really familiar with it, I would suggest you, you, you learn about it because that's really what we're here to do. We're here to connect and, and learn about each other. And that's what reconciliation means to me. If we look at Canada, what Canada is more than anything else is an idea. An idea is simply whatever you make of it. And what we're making of Canada today, the way we move forward is by doing this. It's by coming together. It's by talking. It's by sharing experiences and, and learning from one another. And <clears throat> if you don't find yourself in close proximity or contact with First Nations people in order to be able to talk and have this kind of you know, chat or hang out the way we are, then you're in the absolute best place to be able to do that because there are now with several other books by other great writers uh, and artists, there are books like Black Lives and Bear for Breakfast and things like Kagagi and you can learn about uh, not only the indigenous experience, the indigenous reality of the past, but of our time today. With the pandemic, it was a strange time and it was a horrible time for a lot of people. Uh, and very, like I said, very trying, but it was also uh, an unprecedented global shared experience, the likes of which I've, I've never seen in my lifetime. And in that, I think we have to find a, an opportunity because it presents us with the reality that we currently have more in common now than we've ever had at any point in this country's history, no matter where we're from, where we live, uh, our racial background, ethnicity, religion, race, age, creed, we're all dealing with the same things right now. And it's more important now than ever for us to be able to come together and, and talk and share our culture, our stories, our history, our perspective with one another. You're in the absolute best place to do that. A library is more than just a giant room full of books, no matter how great those books are. A library can be a time machine and take you to the past. It can be a spaceship and take you to the farthest reaches of the galaxy where you can do exploration uh, unknown to mankind previously. It can also just allow you to be able to learn about the people beside you and the people next to you, the people we're sharing our time and place with. So if you don't know of any books by indigenous writers, artists, ask your local librarian if she can steer you to some stuff and, and let's start bringing this country together and learning more about each other and sharing things. I always like to say, you know, we're all in it together. And if we're in it together, none of us are truly alone. So enjoy Truth and Reconciliation Day. Have, uh, thank you again to the Pickering Public Library. And thank you to you for hanging out with me today. Enjoy your day, y'all. Peace. I'll catch you around.